is uh, Nitha Ramachandra from the NR Hour Sports Show. This is episode 779. I'm joined by a really special guest, former NBA player Kenny Anderson. Everybody knows him from the New Jersey Nets, but now called the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Nets. He also played with a, tons of, a lot of other teams, uh, Boston Celtics, Hornets, Cherry Blazers, Supersonics, uh, Hornets again, Hawks, Clippers, and overseas too. And uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you for joining the show. It's truly an honor. And how are you and your family going so far during this whole situation? Uh, it's, it's going okay, man. It's up and down. I have my be better days than others. But, um, you know, I, your show, I, I've, been, I've been checking out your show and everything. And it's, it's going well. And I, will, I wanted to get on. But, you know, <laughs> things happen. And I'm on now. So, you know, it's, it's, it's tough yeah. what I'm going through. But it is what it is. Yeah, the... I, for for me, we lost our uncle uh, two weeks ago from COVID. Yeah. So uh, that's yeah. it's, it's, it's it's like rough for everyone right now. Yeah. Hopefully, they resolve it soon uh, with this situation. Yep. But for you, I want to start off with your childhood and while growing up, and uh, obviously basketball is your uh, your passion. But for you, uh, other than basketball, did you get to play any other sports growing up? And who is that one person that you looked up to in the sports industry? Well, I, you know, I tried. You know, I tried all the sports, baseball, the baddest box. You know, I was I was scared of the baddest box, but um, I was a good fielder. <laughs> then I tried football. I was a quarterback. I got sacked and got injured. I never played again. <laughs> and then I got with um, basketball. It hit home for me. It hit home. And uh, when I was a childhood growing up in Left Rack City, Queens, that's what it all happened for me at 14 years old, you know, I played at for Archbishop Beloit High School, and I played as a freshman on the varsity team. So it, it just was a blessing for me to uh, pick up the game of basketball with my sister, Danielle, who was about 56 years old. She used to take me to the park at six years old, and I used to just throw the ball at the basket. That's where she babysitted me at, and it just all came together for me. You know, I never really, uh, like I did my documentary, uh, Basketball's Easy. Mm -hmm. Life is hard. Uh, the Mr. Chibs documentary on myself. But basketball has always been easy for me. Always. From high school, college, and then pro. You know, so I'm just blessed, man. Mm. So in high school, uh, when you were working on your craft to getting your game better, um, did, you, did you get to play multiple positions other than point guard in basketball? No, I just, I, I love, the, I love handling the ball. You mm -hmm. know, I was very great handling the ball. And then um, I learned, you know, Coach Curran, rest in peace. That was my high school coach uh, about getting guys involved, other players involved. And I just loved it because it was a, it was like a, a, I was a coach on the floor, you know, handling the rock, you know. Um, and um, I just played that position, point guard position, and um, took me to the top. Mm. So uh, <clears throat> what were the main, obviously you went to, and for college, but before we get to your college career, what did you learn? What was the main things you learned as a high school player from your coaching staff and your teammates uh, that got you to the next level? You know, helping others. Helping others. I, I think that's the main thing at Archbishop Malloy. That's what I learned. You know, um, it was it was kind of interesting coming back. You know, I, I lived in um, uh, Left Rack City, Queens, about 20 minutes, 30 minutes from the school. I would, I would, I would every morning, you know, be there at seven o'clock my high school, and I would leave the school at nine o'clock at night because I would do my homework and everything in, in the library, and then we had practice at four, and so I just learned to just uh, my craft basketball and working with others well, and that's what I've learned and uh, through 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 life through life how you work with others well, and that's what um. Um, I started doing throughout my career and, um, you know, being a point guard, yeah. the leadership role you have to take being a point guard because you have to be that coach on the floor. And that's what I was. And I loved it. And, you know, Vincent Smith, who was my mentor, you know, that's Kenny Smith's older brother. Oh, wow. Kenny Smith played in the, yep. in the yep. NBA and then he went to UNC, North Carolina. And then he, you know, he went to my high school, Malloy. Archbishop Law High School. So that's one of the guys I looked up to. Uh, that, that I wanted to be him. And I, not, 
only him. I wanted to be better than him, mm -hmm. you know. So that was my uh, motivation. Yeah, so speaking of actually, uh, uh, we had speaking of New York City and New Jersey. So for you, what was it like representing the city of New, Jer uh, New Jersey, New York? Um, we had Chris, we had Chris Childs on the show uh, yeah. last year. And um, you, I think you two, in my opinion, you two were the staples of New Jersey, New York. So what was it like for both of you to represent uh, New Jersey, New York? Well, well, me, I lived, you know, I lived about, come left rack city, Queens. So lived about an hour, an hour and a half from it. So, you know, it was, it was a blessing for me to go back home because when I got drafted, I knew, I thought I, I knew I, I was going three to Sacramento Kings. Mm -hmm. I, I went number two to the New Jersey Nets. Yeah. It was all surprise for me. And then I knew I was going you know, to play with Drazen Petrovic, Derek Coleman, you know, those three big, big three. It, it was awesome, you know, coming back to New Jersey, playing for my, um, the Metropolitan team um, and living in New York. So, you know, I got, I, I was, I, I love both worlds. I was living in, um, my mother lived in uh, Glen Cove, Long Island, mm. you know, not far from New Jersey and, uh, my left rack city where I grew up, I could always go back and see my friends, right. you know, my off night. It was, it was just, it was just great for me. Yeah. So uh, now uh, take me back to your recruiting process. Um, how many offers did you have coming out of high school and what made you choose Georgia Tech? <laughs> I had, I had every offer in the book. I had every offer in the book, man. Stop. Zillions of offers. Wow. I chose Georgia Tech, you know, because, you know, my mother went on my visit. Um, she loved Atlanta, the Southern hospitality, hmm. but I wanted to go to Syracuse because of Pearl Washington, another Brooklyn native. And I'm from Queens. He's from Brooklyn. He was one of the, he's the best point guard out of New York hmm. in those days, you know, and I grew up watching all the great point guards, uh, Kenny Smith, Pearl Washington, Mark Jackson, Rod Strickland, Boo <laughs> Harvey, Kenny Hutchison. Those was all the great point guards before me. So, you know, it, it was, you know, I, I chose Georgia Tech because of Coach Crimmins, who went to uh, All Hollows High School, um, and my mother, you know, my mother wanted me to go to Georgia Tech. She thought it would be a great, great school for me, um, not only uh, playing basketball, but just a great, uh, great school for me to, to grow as a human being. Hmm. Um, so, uh, obviously, in college, um Georgia Tech is one of the best growing programs in college. And right now it's basketball, football, they're, they're, they're growing right now. And for you, what was it like just playing in Georgia Tech um, in front of those fans and the atmosphere? It, Malloy, Archbishop Malloy, uh, my high school and my college was the best six years of my life that I played basketball in. You know, um, Georgia Tech, is, is, it's in my heart, man. And um, it just was a great school for me to go to and, not just playing um, Atlanta. I love the town in Atlanta. I just loved everything about Georgia Tech. Uh, and um, the fans was awesome. Um, the school is awesome. You know, it's just, it just was a blessing that everything worked out for me everywhere I went. Hmm. So now, um, now for your draft experience, uh, you got drafted in 1991, round one, pick two, obviously to the New Jersey Nets. And what was it like just taking uh, David, the late David Stern's hand and RIP to him and uh, just devastating that he's gone? And But what was it like, the draft draft experience like, and what was the call like? Oh, it was, the call was great, man. You know, when they called my name, it was an awesome feeling for me and my mother because I know I arrived. I arrived financially. You know, when you make it to the NBA, you, you arrive financially. And I wanted to buy my mother a house and take care of my mother. And I did that. You know, I did that. So it was a blessing. Uh, David Stern was a very, uh, a good commissioner. Yeah. Uh, and, that, and now um, um, Adam Silver is taking over. He's doing a great job. Uh, NBA is a great life, but you have to know how to use it, you know, for your best interest. And um, um, I had a lot of, my, my, my mentors, Vincent Smith, Pierre Turner, those two guys really helped me a great deal. Hmm. So obviously you, you just mentioned the roster. You, you paid, play with Derek Coleman, Jaws and Petrovic, and also you play with Mookie Baylock and Sam Bowie. So uh, like if you go down the roster, what was it like just going back home and going into your rookie year and being able to play with great players you just mentioned? Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> you know, I, I played my first year under uh, Coach Bill 
Fitch, uh, he didn't play me much, but I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I learned a lot in practice playing with Mookie Blaylock and then with Sam Bowie. They, they were great. They were great guys. But when you know, you don't learn. You you learn when you get in. I was a rookie, so you learn a lot through watching them guys play. But not only uh, playing, but the off court situation that you have to you know that you have to learn and that's uh financially some of those guys don't want you to get you know x amount of dollars because it might be taken from their mouth right so it's different man and you had to learn that i learned that and it was a great learning experience for me um and then i got with jaws and petrovic and Derek coleman <laughs> you know we couldn't play you know mookie blaylock great point guard I was a great point guard. You couldn't, we couldn't play together. So they traded him to Atlanta. Oh. And that's when I got the ball back. Um, you know, draw, um, Chuck Daly, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. One of my best NBA coaches that I had, you know, and I loved him. And he gave me the ball, let me rock. And uh, I made the all-star team in 94. Derek made the all-star team. It was just a great, um, great uh, first NBA coach you know, stop or for me to learn the game. I didn't, not, not so much the game, but about the NBA life mm -hmm. that, that it gave me. It taught me a lot. And I really appreciate it. If you guys didn't trade Mookie, you guys had a, you, you guys could have had a big four right there in New Jersey. <laughs> I, I'm not, nah, yeah. because he's a point guard. I'm a point guard, period. <laughs> you can't, you can't win like that. He has to go and find his niche. He found his niche in Atlanta. I found my niche with the Nets, period. You cannot have two point guards. Right. That's back then you couldn't. Now you might can play like that. Mm -hmm. You know, in 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 the 2021s, the NBA is a lot different. Yeah. But you know, we could not play. You know, together, and he had to get moved, or I got moved, one of the other. Yeah. So obviously, New Jersey had. I love your you guys throwback jerseys that you guys had back in the day, and they still use it now uh, when yeah. they're in Brooklyn. Um, the blue, the light blue ones, the red ones. So, but what was it like just being home and being able to see your family in the stands th throughout your career? Oh, oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. Going back home, playing, you know, in New York, uh, in the metropolitan area, um, being that I was a great high school player, great college player, you know, everybody could see me, you know, it was, it was awesome, man. I really, uh, appreciate the New Jersey Nets drafting me. Hmm. So obviously now I'm just curious as a player, I had so many players on the show that moved on from different teams to teams. So for you, how tough is it was leaving from New Jersey? Obviously the team that drafted you and going to team to team, like obviously you play with another great franchise in Boston, but how tough is it for you moving from team to team, especially your family? Oh, it was a blessing. I thought, you know, cause I've got to learn. Uh, I like to see, first of all, different cities, uh, and then I had to learn different coaching styles and things of that nature. It was awesome. But the three teams that give I give the most love to is New Jersey Nets, Boston Celtics, and Trailblazers. Mm -hmm. That's where I had, you know, most of my uh, minutes I played, a great total minutes, 30, 35 plus minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, they, they jerked me for a few all-star teams <laughs> when I played with Portland Trailblazers, Boston Celtics. I was different, but we went to the Eastern Conference Finals. We played New Jersey Nets. But I love Boston playing the Celtics. I love the Trailblazers. And I love New Jersey Nets. And all other teams, ha, I played it. I played with it. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah, so speaking of Boston, you got to, you got to play with Ron Mercer, Paul Pierce, um, a lot of great legendary players there too. So what was it like playing in the, in the, at the TD Garden, uh, one of the best stadiums, in my opinion, arenas? But what was it like playing with those players also in Boston? I played there with Antoine Walker, Antoine Walker. Paul Pierce, Tony Batty. Uh, you know, when I got there, uh, Ron Mercer was traded. But, oh, okay. you know, the, when I got there, Ron Mercer was traded. And, and we were losing the first two years. And then Rick Pitino, yeah. uh, he quit, you know, for, for different reasons. He resigned. And then Jim O'Brien took over. Hmm. And that's, you know, was great. You know, it was always great for me in Boston. But uh, when when um, Jim O'Brien took over, we went to the Easter Conference Finals. We started winning. We started playing better. You know, just another different type of ear. You know, different type of, uh, you know, you, certain things you take, you know, from 
excuse me, mm-hmm. from um, different coaches. And, and maybe we need to listen to someone else at the time. And Rick Pitino was a great coach. Jim O'Brien's an awesome coach. Um, I, I played for a lot of coaches in the NBA and all of them. I don't give no negativity to none of them. They taught me a great, uh, great thing about coaching. They t- all of them taught me great, and I and I appreciate it. Yeah. Also, you you got you also uh, uh, Chauncey Billups, D Brown, and Bruce Brown were on the roster too. That that roster they wasn't. They wasn't. Oh, they they wasn't. got traded. Oh, they, they all got traded. traded. They got traded for me. Oh. So it was awesome. They wasn't on the roster. They got traded. Uh, Chauncey Billup got traded to Toronto, uh, and I was there in Boston. They got traded for me. Yeah. yeah so, um, what, so what did you? What was the main? What was the thing? The things that you learned from Antoine Walker and Paul Pierce um, as teammates and uh, how they go about their business. It was great teammates. I didn't learn much from them that they wanted the ball all the time. They wanted to shoot. <laughs> That's what they did, you know what I'm saying? And we we came in, we meshed, we meshed very well together, and that was it. But I, I was the older vet on the team, you know. So, you know, it, it was awesome playing in Boston. So now uh, switching gears, also you played overseas. So what was it like adapting to the overseas game? Obviously, to play differently. Um, what was that like playing overseas for you? Yeah, uh, it was awesome. I went overseas because my mother. And that's I went over there for for the season, hmm. and um, my guy uh, I played for um, who I played for who who played with me in um, uh, Portland. The right. big guy played for me. Uh, he was a GM. I forget his name. Um, forgot his name. His son plays with uh, Indiana Pacers right now. Hmm. Um, he 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 ran the team. He owned the team. So he he, he asked if I would come over and play. I was like, yes. You know, through all the the, the 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 circumstances I was going through, me, my wife, and my daughter went overseas for six months. It was a great, great experience for me, and uh, I love playing in Lithuania. They took care of me there. So, what, um, did you uh, was it hard for you to train hard transition, easy transition, and what was it? Did you guys did you learn the language there? No, I didn't learn the language. It was tough to learn <laughs> at, at, at my age, but uh. Uh, the transition it, it, overseas, and I tell a lot of players this, I couldn't have played overseas if I'm younger. They practice too much <laughs> overseas. It's a little different, you know what I mean? A little different type of basketball. Um, uh, but it was great for me. I was on my way out, you know, um, so I could do, I could deal with it. So, uh, so now for you, uh, what does it be? What does a point guard mean to you? Because obviously, the, it's like the quarterback of the NFL. It's the most important position in in all sports. I think for you, what 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 did what did it mean for you to be a point guard throughout your career? Oh, it means it means the world to me because uh, point guard, you know, you got to have that leadership. It's all coaching. Yeah, you know, you coaching your your team on the floor. So it was great. Taught me a great lesson. You know, guys want the ball every time out of your hands. You know. <laughs> They want to shoot the ball. You got to be in right situations. You know, you got to learn from 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 different players. I played with all the greats. Yeah, different players where they good at. You have to know that. You know, and get those guys the balls. Get those guys the balls in the right direction, in the right you know, feel. And and they'll fall in love with you. Being a point guard, you have the team surrounded and giving you that love if you get them the ball. Hmm. <laughs> if yeah. Now you're you you you're the goat too, man. When it, uh, I uh, you're the goat. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. So uh, for for you though, looking back at your career, obviously you had over two thousand points. Yeah. Um, I mean, sorry, over ten thousand points. Then you had over two thousand uh, rebounds, five, over five thousand assists. So looking at looking back at your career, how great are you to be in this position? And do you, I think, in my opinion, you deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. Do you deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, I don't I don't know, you know, about the Hall of Fame, but. My high school jersey is in the Hall of Fame, and it's next by Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Yeah. So, if I get there, so be it. But if I don't, I know what I did in the game of basketball. It, it's been great for me. I thought, and I still think, I'm so truthful that I could have been better in the NBA. Yeah. But 
trials and tribulations, you just learn things, you know. You know, I worked extremely hard when I had to in the NBA, you know, and you got to always work hard. That's why I give a lot of love to uh, LeBron James, Kobe, right. uh, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Jordan. They worked extremely hard night in and night out on the basketball court, you know, even even practice and just working on their skills. And I did. I worked on them, but just different. I had a different mindset, hmm. but it it, it it was awesome. My career, played 14 years in the NBA. I, I I could I could I was blessed, man. Thank you. I was blessed. Yeah. So speaking of Kobe, obviously you competed against Kobe throughout your career. So what was your do you have any like Kobe memories? And what was your most memorable game that you played against? Kobe? We beat them uh, by two points. Uh, Boston Celtics and Lakers. Okay. Um, I don't remember so much, but we beat them by one or two. And uh, but I knew he was a great player, great competitor, great play. Worked extremely hard on his game. Yeah. And all other stuff come come last. And um, that's how it should be. But uh, he was just awesome. He was awesome. I played with uh, Le I played against Kobe, LeBron, and Michael Jordan. Oh wow! So, so that's my. That's that's great. That's a great era. So I, I played in the nineties, two thousands. It was awesome. Wow. So um, I, all right. So out of those three, who was the toughest one to guard? Uh, I, I was. I'm gonna go with Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with Michael Jordan. You know, he was tough. Hmm. He was tough, Michael Jordan. And then I don't. Uh, Michael Jordan is number one. And then Kobe, uh, LeBron. I, it could go either way. Yeah, <laughs> it could go either way. Yeah, so for you, obviously now uh, after your career, you guys, you, you're working on actually you you have something right now, Kenny 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 Anderson Showcase. I want to get to that. I think that's a yeah. great thing. Yeah. Great yeah. thing you guys are doing with the kids. Uh, how did this come about? Uh, my 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 good uh guy uh Ian Cunningham who who who's been running it for two years. He see my documentary and he just fell in love with my documentary, and he wanted to give back, and it's a free. A uh, showcase free for Division Two, II, Division Three schools, NAIA schools. You come. Um, I can't wait. It's going on his third year. Mm. He and his, his wife Bianca, they do a hell of a job, man. Down in Cleveland, it, it is great. Wow. It is great for the young men who wants to better themselves and, and get a uh, basketball, better themselves, and a great career in in college. So it's awesome, and I'm really thrilled that um, uh, Ian Cunningham set it up and it's growing each year. It's getting bigger and bigger. And this year is going to be bigger. It's going to be, it's very nice. Hmm. So for you, uh, what do you guys, what do you guys mainly focus on? For, what are you guys most looking forward to this year for the thing, for the showcase? The showcase is basically just talent. You know, we were just, you see the kids work out. Uh, basically, we're just seeing the kids work out and play against each other. They have a lot of fun. And it's, uh, I got like 20, 25 coaches oh. from from different uh, universities, uh, from NAIA, Division II, Division three schools come and we sit and we, and we see who we like. And we try to recruit those kids mm. to come to our university. I'm at Fish University in Nashville, mm. uh, which is a HBCU. Okay. Great school, great school. But they brought me in here for the basketball so I could build it up. And that's what I'm trying. It's uh, it's tough right now, but you know we gotta keep. I gotta keep. I gotta keep trying, keep building, and I will. I will. Oh, you guys will definitely will. I I, I actually I follow that page, the Kenny Anderson Showcase page. Uh, yes. That ran by Ian, and I love what you guys are doing. That's amazing, and uh, th th that keep up the great work with that. And thank you. Um, speaking of HBCU schools, what do you like about the growth of those schools? Because now you have Deion Sanders. At Jackson yeah. University, and now you have Eddie George at Tennessee. Yeah. What do you he's like? He's right down the block. Yeah, he's right down the block from me at TSU. It's it's just awesome. We we have more black, uh, you know, coaches getting involved in the HBCUs, and we need it. We need it because we're like we're like we were. I'm telling you, we were like them. Yeah, we were like those kids, but we were talented in our sports. But it, it's always great to give back, and you know, to give back to you know, the people that we, that we are, African-American, mm. you know, we have to give them 
some acknowledgement, some light to show them that they could still make it. They can make it. And it's awesome. I'm I'm really blessed to be a part of Fish University. And hopefully I can build it and, and get this um get this university where it should be. Yeah. So um now we do this fun little segment on the show called the rapid fire segment. But before yeah. we, before we get to that, I want to ask you about your former team with the Nets and how tough is it when you heard the news when they moved to Brooklyn? But what do you like about – obviously, they kept building the team, team, team. What do you like about the, the, the development of this team? And now they're finding – they're trying to make, win a championship this year. Yeah, Brooklyn Brook, Brooklyn Nets are awesome yeah. with the three top players in the league, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, James Harding. Uh, we, we, we can't lose. <laughs> we can't lose. We better win. Uh, we're in New York. Yeah. So it, it would be awesome for me to play for my Brooklyn Nets because I'm yeah. from New York. I'm down a block from Barclays Arena, you know, okay. where I grew up at. And um, I, I think they will. I don't know if they'll get one this year. They should. But next year, they're, they're in the running. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's just awesome that we have that much talent, you know, and, and, I'm, and I'm glad for the Brooklyn Nets. Awesome. Are you are you are you worried about their the five game I mean four game losing streak right now or nah nah I'm not worried so much about it we're still in second we're gonna go I think we will go first second or third you know we'll fall and victim it to to one of those uh, standards but um and, and we haven't played with the the big three yet right. only seven eight games yes yeah, cool. so in the playoffs. Yo, the league better watch out. The playoff, they will be playing. And it's yeah. gonna be tough. <laughs> it, it, it just shows it just shows how important James Harden is. Yes, yes. Now James Harden is one of those players, he can do it all. Yeah. But he, he makes others better. Kyrie makes others better, but he's a more prolific scorer, I, I believe. Kevin Durant is a scorer also. Mm -hmm. James Harden, he makes everybody around him better. He makes the team better. And we need him. He, he's going to be, he's great. So you ready for this rapid fire segment? Yes. All right. So, uh, all right, this is the important question for you. Did you have any uh, help in the recruiting process with Kyrie and Katie at all? No, no, I did. <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> all right. So obviously your, your Jersey numbers are seven, 12, 13, and 17, but I want to get to seven because KD wears number seven. Did he reach out to you to wear number seven? Or are you? Uh, nah, he's he's big. He's number one player in the lead. Number two or one, how you put it? He don't have to. He don't have to uh, reach out to me. But number seven, I am number seven in the New Jersey Nets. Yeah. That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fa favorite memorable game that you played uh, with in the, in the NBA uh, and overseas? Wow, I, I, man. Whew. It's so many games, man. I, I just love playing basketball. And um, I, I can't remember them. I, I really can't at this moment, you know. So I just had great times playing overseas. Uh, had awesome time playing in the NBA. All the teams I played for was awesome. I, I really can't remember one or two games. If you bring something up, I might remember. But I don't remember. Um, how about um, your uh... – Take me, all right, take me back to, like, the triple-double, most memorable triple-double you had. Oh, wow. I had them. I had three. I had four or five of them. I don't – see, <laughs> they just bring them up through uh, the James Harden. You know, when he got his, I got mine. I don't know which team I was playing against and things of that nature, but uh, uh, the, the triple-doubles is big. Hmm. It's a lot of work, I'll tell you that. Right. <laughs> scoring, assisting, everything. It, it's eternal. It was it's tough. But I don't remember, man, my triple doubles. So uh so I, for you, how often do you visit Barclay Center and go to the games usually? I, I didn't go. I, I didn't go. I'm I'm gonna go to a playoff game this okay. year. Hmm. I've been there, I've been there a few times. Um, but um I, I love it. I love going back to New York, love going back to Left Rack City. Where, I, where I'm from. I love seeing the Nets play. And especially this year, you know, they, they, they're they going for a, a championship. I'm definitely going to go back uh, to um, and watch them play. You know, especially Steve Nash, great player, yeah. first-year coach. I want to be in the building. Hmm. So for you, obviously, you guys, the Nets had so many uh, great point guards throughout their history, like you, Jason Kidd, um, Darren Williams. 
and then you, now you have Kyrie. So what's it like to have, for the Nets to be able to have these type of point, guard, point guards like yourself? It was awesome, man. Awesome to watch and see the development of those guys. Kyrie Irving, I love watching him play. You know, he's just a great talent. You know, great finisher with both hands, pass the ball, great handle. You know, I, I love Damon Lillard, mm. you know, but I, th I think he's eking him out with the ball handling skill. <laughs> but Damon Lillard is eking him out with the jump shot. Stephen Curry, those guys – can shoot the ball extremely well and also can handle. Yeah. So and Chris Paul is the is the, is the is the real deal as point guard. Point guard. But he can shoot the ball, he can handle. Uh Russell Westbrook is great. They got a lot of five or six great point guards in the league now that you can watch and really learn from. Awesome. Awesome. Uh what do you consider coaching in the NBA or, or college? Now, I coach college. I coach at Fish University. Oh, okay. I coach there now. I've been there two years in Nashville. Um, it's awesome. HBCU school, mm -hmm. Fish University. I don't – I wouldn't want to coach in the pros. Mm -hmm. Pro, I, I'm, I'm, I'm right here good enough where I can build. And, and it's going to be tough here to build, but I'm I'm going to push it. This is where I want to be at. And if I, can, if I can grow here, I can grow anywhere. Uh, where do you get your nickname from? Well, Mr. Chips, my mother named me Mr. Chips when I was like four four days old. Mm -hmm. the, the nurse brought her, brought me into the hospital, and she, I, she was eating. She said cheeks, chips, and it came out chips. So I didn't know my um, name until kindergarten that my name was Kenneth. So my whole neighborhood called me Chips. Everybody called me Chips. It's just a great name, um, and um, I, I love it. I love my day, man. It's great. Yeah, so um, is it time for another team in Seattle now in New Jersey? I would think so. You know, New Jersey, Seattle would be awesome to get those NBA teams there because it's a great city. Yeah. New Jersey, Seattle, I only played for about half a year there, but it was awesome. Seattle is a great town. They got the WNBA there. Why not NBA? It's awesome. Yeah, so, um, so now before we get to the last two things, I got to ask you this. What's it like now seeing the Knicks competing for a playoff spot? I mean, they're in the fourth seed. And what's it like seeing both teams in, in the local area being in the playoffs? Oh, it's awesome. You know, the New York Knicks, that's my family team, you know, because my, they're from New York. My mother, you know, everybody, my brother, everybody loved the Knicks. And so they're winning again. So hopefully they continue this winning tradition. You know, uh, uh, Tom uh, Tibolo, the, 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 the head coach there, is doing an amazing job there. And uh, hopefully they could keep winning, you know. But uh, Brooklyn Nets is going to keep winning with the talent they have. They're going, we're going to win. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're going to win. But uh, the Knicks are, are playing very well, so it's great to have the Brooklyn Nets and the New York Knicks winning again. So that whole area can really get the love. It's awesome. Yeah. So the last two things here before I let you go, um, our team is part of this foundation called the Hugh Jackson Foundation. Um, he's a former NFL coach. Actually, he's on the Eddie, he's on Eddie George's staff now. Oh, it's awesome! Yeah, so we're, you got to hook me up with some tickets. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so um, we're we're helping him prevent uh, human trafficking and making yeah. making sure the kids stay safe and the yeah. community stay safe. And it's so horrible out there what I'm seeing. And uh, I'll send you that page so you can check it out. Yeah, please do. Mm -hmm. And the last thing here, would you like to say anything to anything to all the nurses, doctors, and the essential workers right now? they're the winners. They're the number one people that's working. They're doing an extremely great job. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I had a stroke about two years ago and um, they really did a great job for me at uh, Vanderbilt. I so, yo, excuse me, uh, in, in Florida, uh, the hospital and um, it, they, they, they awesome. They're mm -hmm. awesome. I really can't um, thank you enough. All the doctors and nurses, Keep up the, the – I'm just praying that y'all just keep up the great work. Yeah, well, so uh, speaking of this, uh, I, 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 I I forgot to put, mention that. Uh, how, how how tough is it when you went through that? Oh, it was extremely tough, but I'm, I got over it. Uh, take my medicine. And this is sometimes I forget a lot of things. So, you know, that's the only thing I was I, – I forget a lot of things. And that's – you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm 50 years old now, so – 
You know, a lot of my friends mess with me and say, hey, you know, they, they forgot when they was 30. <laughs> so I'm, 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 you know, I'm doing better. I'm doing much better taking my medicine and just, you know, and that's, and that's the main key. I got a beautiful wife that really takes care of me, um, Natasha Anderson. Mm -hmm. She's been there, you know, we was, we was together, fifth, we married 15 years, been oh, together wow. 18. So it's, it's been, it's been a blessing for me to have someone like her in my corner. And I love her for that. Hmm. Yeah, so there it is. That wraps up episode seven, 779 with former NBA point guard, Kenny Anderson. Uh, go and follow him on all, on all social media formats. And they're doing a great job with the Kenny, Kenny Anderson showcase. And obviously, he's a coach at Fisher, uh, HBC. Fish, 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 oh. fish. Oh, fish, fish. There you go. Yeah, so uh, – <laughs> sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, keep up the great work as a coach and uh, keep up a great work with the showcase. And truly an honor for having you on the show today. And uh, you and your family stay safe. Uh, sorry for your loss. And uh, hopefully uh, we can have you back on the show again so you can meet the full team. Okay. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. No problem.